It's finally time for Evil Dead Rise to hit theaters all around the world. And that being said, I think it's only fair that we take a look at the movie that started it all, The Evil Dead. <laughs> Welcome back to Wrestling With Horror. My name is, of course, Andrew Dreamer, and as always, I'm here to talk about professional wrestling. I'm here to talk about horror movies and look at all the ways that they intersect, connect, and everything in between. And as I said already, we're going to be taking a look at The Evil Dead, released in 1981, directed by Sam Raimi and starring Bruce Campbell in his first ever film role. Now, Bruce Campbell's character of Ashley Williams will go on to become one of the most iconic characters in horror history, but he had his beginning in this film right here. And we all know what the Evil Dead series has kind of become throughout the decades and the uh, comedic aspect that it took in the second film onward and into the TV series. But this first film was not really that. It was a straightforward horror movie that was kind of just like this very unique thing that had never really been done before. And that's what makes it so special. It's, I won't say that it's my favorite entry in the series. It's not. Um, I think that is going to lie with the second one as I rewatch this entire franchise. And we'll do a ranking um, after I get through all of the reviews and the new movie comes out and everything like that. And yes, we are going to review all of the movies. However, I'm going to review this movie now and then do the new one. And then I'll go back and hit the other films Um after that, just because of time reasons. I just, I ran out of time and it, it's been a really busy last couple weeks. So I ran out of time trying to get prepared for this and I apologize for that, but that's how we're going to do it. So let's just jump right into this film. Of course, it starts with a group of friends uh, in that classic Oldsmobile Cutlass going to this just secluded cabin in the middle of the woods. It's run down, it's crappy, and that's what it's intended to be. Of course, they're trying to stay optimistic that this might not be as bad as it seems. Uh, of course it is, though. It is. There are you know, several friends in this car, which would be retcon going into the second movie, but we'll talk about that when we get to Evil Dead 2. Now, most of these characters are pretty forgettable. Uh, Ash is, of course, Ash, and you're going to remember him, but you also have Linda and these other characters. Linda is Ash's girlfriend. And she's the only character that's actually going to return in the sequel. But they get to the cabin, and they start looking around and all these things, and then that's when they find the Necronomicon. And from there, it just... <sighs> crap hits the fan, you know what I mean? <laughs> you start getting all the deadites coming out, and just... They're really creepy. The makeup design on them is really good, and there's a lot of gore in this movie. And from there, you know, one by one, they kind of turn into deadites, and Ash kind of turns into, like, the final guy of this film. He's trying to save everybody, and it's seeming like it's really to no avail, and he just can't do it, but he gets determined to just survive. He is a survivor, and that's what I like about the character so much, especially in this one. I mean, of course, going forward, he's still a survivor, but in this one, there's just, like, a certain kind of grit to him. And as I already said, this movie is not really play for comedic um it's not comedic at all really it's very straightforward it's very uh terrifying and and gory and that's kind of what i like about it i i can appreciate the attempt on being unique and all those things that sam raimi tried to tie into this and of course sam raimi is the guy who directed the, the original spider-man trilogy and uh the new the newest doctor strange movie and there was a lot of those elements in the new Doctor Strange movie that came from his time working on the Evil Dead. And that's one of the reasons I, I enjoyed that movie the, the way that I did. Now, there is one scene in this movie that we kind of have to brush, uh, talk about a little bit. I don't want to really go into detail what the scene is. I think we all know what it is at this point. It's the tree scene. Um, I don't really care for the scene. It's hard to watch. It's not enjoyable. It I mean, I guess it accomplishes what it was meant to do. It, it's just disgusting and terrifying. But, and you know, Sam Raimi has even since said that he regrets putting it in there, that he never meant to offend anybody. He just was trying to entertain and terrify and scare people. And his judgment was just kind of a little off, him being 20 years old at the time of filming. 
everybody working on this film was young. It was, you know, Sam Raimi, 20 years old, Bruce Campbell, 21 years old, and a bunch of their friends and family who all drove down to Tennessee to film this movie for a budget of just, you know, under half a million dollars. And uh, that budget was mostly made up of their friends and family supporting them, which is nice. I, it's nice to see that these people all got their start because people supported them. And I, I can really, really respect that. And I, it just, it makes you feel grateful for the opportunities that you have when people support you that way. And I really like that. Now, I don't really want to go through the entire plot of this movie because that's not the point of this review. The point of this review is to just talk about like the implications that this movie had. Of course, this movie, you know, it got a good review from Stephen King after it was made. And that's kind of what helped them get their distribution in, uh, in the United States. And that was a huge thing at the time because this movie was just an unknown thing. And for Stephen King, somebody of Stephen King's stature to say, hey, this is really good. And it just, it, it catapulted this movie to the heights that it has reached. And it created a phenomenon. Now in the original, we don't really get a lot of the aspects, um, even of Ash's character that people will come to know him for, you know, with the, the boomstick and his little one-liners and, you know, all that little stuff. Like I said, that comes in the sequel. But here, he's still very well acted. He's still very good at doing his own, like, little stunts. He, Bruce Campbell plays this part perfectly. He, he is meant for this role. This role kind of just encapsulates his career in a way. Now, I know he's done a lot of other stuff, and I enjoy him in a lot of other things. But this is kind of the one where everybody thinks of it as like, yep, yeah, that's, that's Bruce Campbell. And it feels like you're just watching Bruce Campbell, not even really the character of Ash. And that makes sense. And those are when the characters are the best, I think, especially when it's done to the level that it's done here. Now, there are some people who can't really make that connection where they're kind of being themselves, but it's the character. Some people, you see them playing a character and it just like, oh, they're not really acting. They're just being themselves. But when Bruce Campbell does it in this movie and in the entire series and a lot of other things, it just works because that's it's the type of personality he has. It's the type of human being that he is. It just comes through on the screen in like a, just a perfect way. And like I said, we're already kind of into the positives of this film. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I really enjoyed the gore and the sheer terror that you feel throughout watching this movie. And like I said, the Deadites just, they look phenomenal through the entire thing. They're creepy. They are bloodthirsty. There's a lot of good practical effects in this movie when, um, you know, you have the girl getting stabbed in the ankle with a pencil. That is brutal. And it's, it's hard to watch sometimes. But I just, I enjoy things like that. I like that all these people came together and created this... I guess it's a phenomenon. That's what they created. They created a phenomenon. All of that being said, you have to talk about the negatives of the film. And one of them I've already kind of brushed on was that tree scene. I'm not going to go into any more detail of it. It's not needed. But there are also some cheaper feeling things to the movie. Um, and of course it is cheap. It was made for under half a million dollars, which... You know, it's not a lot of money to make a movie, but it can be done. John Carpenter did it with Halloween, and so did Sam Raimi with this film. So it is very doable, and they did a good job with it, but there are just still some aspects that don't feel right to me. Um, it feels cheap in some areas. The writing isn't the strongest, and again, it all makes sense because of how young these people are. So I can't really knock it too much for that. And honestly, the biggest negative for this movie is that the second one exists. The second one exists and it just completely reworks the entire thing. It goes for a different tone, but keeping up the gore. Um, and, it, you know, I just, I love the second movie. I love it so much and I like the kind of condensed little, you know, we'll get into that in the next one. I need to talk about the first one. But like I said, there I just it's not my favorite in the series. It's not my least favorite either though. It's still a very good movie. You know, I don't guess I really have many more negatives for this movie. Like I said, it's it's well it's well made. It's uh shot beautifully. Sam Raimi did a lot of things to get the shots that he wanted in the film and it just it worked beautifully. Um for this movie being so like darkly lit, it works perfectly in that sense too. It created something amazing, and we're still getting them to this day. 
And like I said before, I'm going to talk about this movie now. I'm going to talk about the new one, Evil Dead Rise, in just a couple days. And then we're going to go back and do Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, and then the remake. I don't really have the time to cover the TV series, and I haven't even seen the entire series, so I, I don't feel confident in talking about that at all. But we're going to cover the rest of the films in the franchise, and I'm really excited for the new film coming out. That being said, I think that's all I've got for you today. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about this movie. Um, is it your favorite in the franchise, or do you like the other ones a little more because of the shift in tone? I'm curious. I really want to hear from you all. Be respectful as always. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and do that. I don't know what you're waiting for. I appreciate all the support, so hit that button. Turn your notification bell on. There's going to be a lot of Evil Dead content coming your way in the next few days and couple weeks. My name is Andrew Dreamer. And this is Wrestling With Horror.